All right, ladies and gentlemen, so Sweet Sorrow is one of the newest weapons introduced in Season of the Risen slash Witch Queen, and I'm not gonna lie, all right? I had absolutely no intention of making a video on this weapon. Between other really good autos that are already in the game, which we'll talk about, I just didn't think Sweet Sorrow could hold up to them. That is, until I tried it, and oh boy, was I wrong. I truly believe that if you're looking for an auto rifle in the energy slot, or you just want an AR in general that's really good, Sweet Sorrow is one of, if not the best, auto rifles you can go with. So in this video we're going to be going over sweet sorrow the best perks and why i believe it's one of the best autos in d2 currently but before we get started if you're new and only right only if you enjoy my videos or find them useful then feel free to subscribe i'd appreciate it also if you're looking to increase your god roll drops inside of destiny 2 word on the street is picking up some g fuel with code myfi I can help you with that all right link below for that juicy discount okay all right plugs done let's get into it so first up sweet sorrow is a 720 rapid fire frame arc auto rifle and because it's a 720 it's got some stiff competition primarily in the kinetic department such as crate which i have made a video on and chroma rush which is no longer obtainable but if you manage to get a god roll it's still a very good option now there are also some 720 energy options as uh, such as arctic haze and reckless oracle but in terms of their perk combos they really don't hold a candle to sweet sorrow in my opinion like if you just look at their perk combinations it's it's eh. but where sweet sorrow blows every 720 auto and not just the energy ones out of the water is the fact that it's craftable and can get enhanced perks so because it's craftable you don't have to worry about bs rng except of course when you're farming for red frame sadly and like i just mentioned it can get enhanced perks and and while I don't think that enhanced perks are like crazy good right now, they're still better than just the normal versions. And in my opinion, I can see Bungie eventually buffing some of the enhanced perks. Now we'll come back to the whole Sweet Sorrow versus every other auto in just a second. But first, let's talk about the perks slash god roll first is the origin perk land tank so right off the bat just getting kills is going to help with survivability as final blows are going to increase resilience and additional damage resistance from combatants now for column one where you have nine barrel options arrowhead break chambered compensator corkscrew rifling extended barrel fluted barrel full bore hammer forge rifling polygon rifling <gasps> and small bore now if you're on controller go with stability and if you're on mk well go with range some good options for stability are chambered compensator and small bore just to name a few but if it has stability go for for it for m and k i love full board because i'm personally crazy but other perks like hammer forge and corkscrew rifling are good here as well next for column two you have seven perks accurized rounds appended mag tactical mag extended mag steady rounds alloy mag and flared mag well now to be honest with you i take a pinned mag or some sort of mag perk that just isn't extended just so you don't kill your reload so like i mentioned a pinned is good because well it ups your mag size without any other penalties to reload or anything like that or you could go with something like tac mag or flared magwell so now that we're past the boring columns and remember that if you're not crafting this weapon you're still getting random rolls and you know, the columns one and two are kind of whatever as long as you get good perks in columns three and four well in column three you have six options pulse monitor auto loading holster triple tap stats for all killing wind and perpetual motion now sadly we don't have traditional reload perks or something like overflow but don't let that fool you right because there are still some top tier perks in this column your first good option is triple tap this weapon has 52 base in the mag and is a fast firing frame so hitting those three rapid headshots for an extra bullet is going to be big easy if you can manage to hit mostly headshots throughout most of the mag it's going to lead to over 20 plus more bullets being fired before you need to reload then if you get the enhanced version it cuts out that rapid part so you don't have to land those headshots as fast and you can take your time either switching targets or just making sure you can land those shots now the other good option and my number one pick stats for all this perk increases handling stability reload and range after hitting three separate targets and it works even if those targets are immune this perk alone is why i'm not recommending perpetual motion or killing wind as stats for all does the same thing as those perks do excluding killing winds mobility buff which you don't really need while also pairing very nicely with a perk we'll talk about in column four you can probably already guess what it is plus once you get the enhanced version of stats for all the duration of the timer increases it's not a big increase but it's still an increase overall triple tap is good but in my opinion stats for all is better and now finally we have column four where there are six perks to choose from turnabout tap the trigger demolitionist vorpal weapon one for all and focus fury now i'm gonna be honest despite this column having six perks 
there's only really three you should actually go with. First is Vorpal Weapon. Now, Vorpal did receive a buff to primary weapons this season. It's now a 20% damage increase to yellow bar enemies. Now, even though this sounds good, and I'm not saying that, you know, it's a bad perk by any means, I just can't wrap my head around using it for anything other than the champs when like ARs have champ mods like they do this season. So if you personally like Vorpal, go with it. And I'd recommend pairing it with Triple Tap so you can just lay into whatever stun champs head slash crit spot you're shooting or whatever it might be. Your next option for this column is gonna be Demolitionist. With Void Nades being real good this season having a perk that can charge them up even faster is super nice also the mag on this weapon is pretty big so the whole three second reload penalty when throwing your grenade is kind of irrelevant as it'll take you much longer than that to actually go through the entire mag but just a heads up if you are returning to destiny and you used to use demo because it used to be a very top tier perk there is now a slight cooldown for the whole reload so if you were to throw an aid and then you get your nade back within three seconds to it again it's not going to re-reload it again so just heads up i personally like demo but only for like grenade slash ability builds and i'd rather have a damage perk for a weapon like this now speaking of a damage perk let's talk about my number one pick in this column one for all if there's one thing i sent for in this game it's one for all right you all know how much i love one for all. I, I i love it all right a 35 percent damage increase for 10 seconds after hitting three separate targets even if those targets are immune right it sounds kind of familiar like i just said that and that's right i did with stats for all stats for all and one for all were made for each other with these two perks when you activate one you also activate the other that's an increase to handling stability reload speed range and damage all at the same time activation is stupid easy like you literally just need to spray through a crowd of enemies and bam you got them active and uptime is really nice at 10 seconds and there's no cooldown so once those 10 seconds are up then you can just reactivate it by spraying down a crowd again and don't forget that those 10 seconds can be extended out with the enhanced versions of these perks these two perks turn sweet sorrow into an ad clear machine which because it's a primary is what it was made for and because of that when you are ad clearing well that makes hitting three separate targets a lot easier there's a group of ads like like i just said just spray into a group of ads bam you got the perks up and running and then because of that well you're gonna add clear faster they just loop back into each other it's perfect perks for a weapon like this All around, in my opinion, Sweet Sorrow holds the crown for 720 ARs in the energy slot. And because it's in the energy slot, you can still use very popular loadouts such as Izanagi's and an auto-loading rocket. The only downside is it's not void. Man, if this thing was void with volatile rounds, oh my, I'd never take it off. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, you're saying void 720. What about Reckless Oracle? Because it's void and a 720. Well, for one, the perks on Reckless Oracle aren't really that good in my opinion and for two it's a raid weapon so have fun getting it without a team now when you compare sweet sorrow to 720 ars outside of the energy slot well crate is the only real competition this has yes i know about crema rush but like i mentioned it's no longer obtainable and to be honest when it comes to crate it's hard to beat an overflow headstone roll just because it's, it's just so like headstone alone is so good I personally think Sweet Sorrow feels better than Crate in terms of well, just how it feels and how it handles, how it shoots. Everything about it just feels better than Crate. Sight, literally everything. But at the end of the day, you can't really compare the two because Crate can be your kinetic go-to auto and Sweet Sorrow can be your energy go-to. Like you don't actually need to like like put them up one to one to each other and be like oh this one's better it's really if they were in the same slot and maybe the same energy type then like yes you can put them head to head but in my opinion if you need a kinetic go with crate if you need a energy go with sweet sorrow also some people might be wondering about other rpm autos like you know 600s or 360s i think and in my opinion on mk at least 720s are my favorite RPMs of autos. So, but that is Sweet Sorrow, it's God Roll, and why I believe it's one of the best autos in the game. It's the best feeling auto in the game, in my opinion. It's craftable and has access to enhanced perks. You, you, you really can't beat that. A good feeling weapon that you don't have to worry about RNG and can get some insane perks that are enhanced, yeah. But let me know your opinions down below. What roles have you gotten? Have you already crafted it? How do you think it stacks up to other autos in the game? I'm curious what you all think. Please give me your feedback. With all that being said, if you enjoyed the video, then feel free to drop a like and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.